Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com, and today I have an art journaling process video for you. I am working my way through this Dino Wakely media journal. It is getting close to being done, which is super exciting, but I still have a few more layouts to do. And today I'm going to do one that involves gesso and acrylic paint, and this is completely inspired by Shauna Klingerman, who did um, a technique on her Instagram reels that I thought was super cool and I wanted to give it a try with what I had on hand. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, I will definitely list everything I end up using down below. I will link Shauna if you haven't followed her, you should. She is so fun and um, so inspiring with her use of color and texture and it's just great. So um, that being said, I will put you all on fast forward. Let's go. Okay, so Shauna did this fun art journal entry where she mixed paint with texture paste, I believe. Um, I don't have texture paste at the moment and I really wanted to try this. So I'm going with a heavy white gesso. It should still hold its shape. And you can see I'm just putting a little bit of the paint down and then mixing it really well or as well as I can with the gesso and then using my card to just scrape it down. And I want it to have tons of texture tons of dimension. Um, this is something that I would normally be kind of scared to do just because you don't have a lot of control over what is happening, but I love it. I think it is so fun to play with in your art journal. And that's what I've been loving about art journaling. Like let's play with all of the texture and dimension. Let's go to extremes and like go overboard and then bring it back. So something I kind of played around with was how much paint I mixed in. This time I mixed in a little bit more paint. And so it wasn't quite as thick thick and didn't have quite as much texture. So the next time around I changed it up a little bit. It probably would have been fun to do even some more blending um, to mix the pink and the yellow, but what I was really going for was kind of a rainbow look going down the page and some horizontal stripes. Again, totally inspired by Shauna, but that's why people put things out there. As long as you're giving credit, then um, by all means, be inspired by other artists and try to emulate, give them credit for their inspiration. Um, but if they're putting it out there, then they definitely want you to, um, to take it and kind of make it your own as well. Okay, you can see with the green, I definitely put less paint in it. Um, it was kind of a um, bright green anyway, but that ended up being a little bit more pastel-y than I intended, which is okay. I'm gonna be using some of Vicki Booten's color study line, some of her ephemera to put on top of this, and it has pretty much all of the colors. So I'm not really worried about the colors matching. Um, I'm just going with kind of a loose rainbow. I don't really like the color red. That might be like a controversial uh, statement, but I don't even like to put red in my rainbows. I prefer to replace it with pink. So I'm not a red person. I'm not really a primary color person. I prefer like the bold colors, like the bold markers from Crayola. That's like my vibe. So let me know. Are you like the primary set of markers or are you bold? Um, I'm definitely more of a bold girl. I don't really like red that much. So that might be, you know, maybe it's just I don't like red in my art. Although I don't have a lot of red except for uh, Georgia Bulldog shirts. So it's just not a color I gravitate towards. So you can see I'm kind of changing up my classic rainbow. And I had only planned on five colors, but then I had room at the bottom. So we will of course add some purple because you know, I love purple. I'll have all the purple all day long. So mixing my purple in, you can also tell there's a difference in the heaviness of these acrylic paints. So it's not the most consistent paint, this Handmade Modern line, and I would guess the new line at Target is similar in that sometimes it's thicker, some colors are thicker than other colors. So just something to keep in mind when you're working. It doesn't really bother me. Again, this is kind of just a fun experiment with texture. All right, I put my art journal aside so that it could dry. It took a good long time to dry. So just a heads up, if you're gonna do something like this, you're gonna need to wait a good long time um, to make sure it's dry. And then even when I put my um, collection on top of it, even when I layered on top of it, I still left it open for the rest of the day just so it would dry all the way. 
This is Ephemera from Vicki Booten's Color City line. If you've been watching my channel very long, you know that I am pretty much obsessed with this line. I feel like it was made for me. I love, love, love it. And I decided I just wanted to make like a cluster of ephemera pieces and plop it right on top of that page. I love this line. I love these elements. I have all of the color on the back of the page, so I think it matches really well. And so I decided to kind of bring the two together. So that's what I'm gonna do. I loved this. This, um, particular piece that said create yourself which I think is just such a fun idea in that you can kind of reinvent yourself over and over you can create a life that um, that you love that you want to be a part of and so I thought that was a fun um, idea and a fun kind of phrase for the moment. So I'm actually going to use this tiny stapler. So I recently discovered that the tool that I am missing is a tiny attacher. So I do not have a tiny attacher. Apparently I'm like the only crafter ever um, to not have one. I don't know how I've lasted this long. I, it's on my list. It's on my list of things to get a tiny attacher. All I have is this mini stapler from We Are Memory Keepers. It does the job kind of, but you can see it doesn't reach um, very far in. Layering pieces, I really loved the vellum circle. So I wanted that. And then I was searching, searching, searching for another vellum piece. And then just couldn't find, like, see, I'm looking for one. I didn't see one. And then I find one at the very end, you guys. So I do like these uh, crayons that says color outside the lines, a wonderful phrase for any artist. And you can see, I kind of want it to be cascading down. The idea is that it's kind of spilling out um, from behind the create yourself idea. And I like that it's just going to kind of cast downward. So my staples are not holding it super secure in place. They're kind of just holding it there temporarily and then eventually I'll adhere the whole thing down onto my art journal page. Since there is so much texture in the background, I wanted to bring texture into the foreground as well. So I have the silver string. All I'm doing is winding it around my fingers and so that it's looped up in kind of a messy way. And then I'm adding a little adhesive and I'm putting it behind some of these ephemera pieces. So it's popping out. It has a messy look. I love the silver metallic. I think that's a fun color to add a fun pop. And then it'll be more secure once I adhere the whole piece down. So just adding that in three or four different places around this giant cluster. Notice the create yourself is still on the side. So my idea for even more dimension is to kind of pop up those words. So I'm working with this cluster, what's going to be behind the create yourself. And then I will add in the words right on top. But I think it's fun having that silver thread in there just kind of changes it up a little bit and now I have some foam dots from American Crafts. I will add those in so that this pops just a little bit up off the rest of the cluster and doesn't lay too flat or else it does end up looking just a little bit crowded and crazy. So taking the backing off of those and then I will be able to stick on this whole thing and you can see some of the elements in the back are still movable. Like I can still adjust them to where I want them, which is kind of why I liked that loose staple idea. And once I know that they're exactly where I want them, then I can just add a little bit of adhesive here and there. And it's almost ready to go on my page. The last thing I wanna add, so this is tissue paper, and yes, it has the Disney logo on it. It's from the most recent Happy Planner box that was Disney themed. I saved the tissue paper because I thought it was super cute, and I think it adds a nice element behind all of these paper pieces to have just this light ephemera. Um, I, the Disney part doesn't really that have a meaning to me for this particular spread, except that I liked the kind of black and white feel, the kind of light grayish too that was going on. I'm just tearing it loosely. You'll see it peeking out now and then um, from behind this piece, but otherwise it's pretty much ready to go. Ah, there it is, the last vellum piece. Oh, I love it. So that will go right there. I'm looking for some adhesive or my tiny stapler to add that on. And now it's done and ready to put on my page.
Thank you so much for joining me today for this art journaling video. It was a pretty simple one, but I love the bright, fun colors and playing with texture and dimension is always a fun day in my book. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. I will link supplies down below if you're interested in checking those out. A huge shout out to my YouTube Scrappy members. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for your support. If you are interested in becoming a Scrappy member and finding out about the perks that my Scrappy members receive, make sure to click the join button or check the link in the description box. All right, I hope you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.